<laughs> I mean, it's laughable. Viacom CBS is officially trading like a penny stock. No, this is not Peloton stock. This is not Snapchat or some hype stock. This is Viacom CBS with massive, massive cash flow, which owns Pluto TV, which is massively growing, and the popular Paramount Plus was over like 54 million monthly active subscribers. Now, why did the stock go down so much? Did they lose subscribers? Are they going bankrupt? Are they not making any money? Or are they piling up more debt? What's wrong? with the stock for it. something like Viacom to drop 20% in just one day. Well, just to make it short, I actually finally joined you guys. I bought Viacom CBS today and I bought some long-term call options on the stock. And I'm going to talk about why I bought it and I'm going to show you kind of how undervalued and how underappreciated Viacom CBS actually is. So let's see, are they losing subscribers? No, they grew 9.4 million subscribers in just three months, in one quarter, from 46.7 million to 56.1 million. Massive, massive subscriber growth. What about Pluto TV? Pluto TV grew over 10 million subscribers in just one quarter, guys. So no, they're not really losing subscribers at all. They're gaining massive, massive subscribers. And I have to admit, I was very, very surprised from Paramount Plus, the demand for this kind of product. And is they not even expand into internationally yet they're trying to expand in sweden and other stuff not just with batman plus but also with pluto tv i was very very surprised as how many people really uh, kind of want this product and not only that because they beat their expectations so much they actually raised their guidance they had the guidance of 65 million to 75 for 2024 in terms of direct to consumer subscribers now they have it at 100 million subscribers by 2024 and they can even beat it if they keep continuing like that I mean, this is really massive, guys, for this kind of company like Viacom CBS. Is it maybe because their TV business is dying and it's not making any money, is even shrinking in revenue? No, it actually grew 8% in revenue from 2020 to 2021. And now 2022 is election year in terms of the House and the Senate and all that kind of stuff, governors or whatever it is. So they're actually going to get even more advertising revenue on TV. This is going to be a profitable year for the TV segment in Viacom CBS. And actually, it's not going away anytime soon. And by the way, they're going to change the name from Viacom CBS to actually Paramount because they are getting popular for Paramount Plus and this kind of symbolize something new because Viacom CBS just sounds like an old name. Paramount Plus, it gives them like they are very determined on direct to consumer type of business, which is much, much, much higher margins than them. You could ask Netflix, for example, Viacom CBS makes more revenue than Netflix and Disney, but because they have higher margins, they get crazy high multiple and then Viacom CBS gets like a P of five or six or whatever it's trading at right now. Now, you may say maybe because they have a lot of debt, right? Like, because that's why maybe their, uh, their uh, kind of uh, price, share price is going down. Well, not really. They are actually paying down the debt. If you look at 2019, they had net debt around 18 billion. Now their net debt is around 11 billion. Now they only reduced it, so they paid off only 2 billion. This is their net debt, which includes 6.3 billion in cash. So they still have 11 billion of debt, which is a lot of debt, but they're paying it off. They paid 2 billion this year in 2021. They may pay another two in 2022. Their interest expense is going down and everything is going fine. Like they're trying managing the debt. They not, have no problem. As long as they have cash flow, kind of like Discovery has with, uh, with the merger with Warner Media, they can pay down the debt. The debt is not a problem as long as the cash flow is here. Now, something else. You know, I really want to show you, which is one of the reasons why the stock went down. Now, they are investing heavily in their direct-to-consumer business. Look at their investment. They invested from, it was $1 billion in 2020. They doubled it to $2.2 billion in direct-to-consumer expense. Things like making new content, like marketing, which is why the business is going so fast. And this is what they want to do. They want to take market share from Netflix, from Disney, from all those kind of subscriptions. And especially now, as we have inflation, maybe people want to cut down and maybe something like Paramount Plus, which is like five, six dollars a month, is a better choice than paying 20, 30, 40 dollars a month. Or if they, if they don't even want to pay what Netflix increased, which is like 14, 15 dollars a month, they can get Paramount Plus for five, six dollars a month. So, you know, it's a lot of options in terms of that, and the trend is with them, it's not against them. So, they're investing where the trend is, and it's going to take some time. 
for short-term pain for long-term gain. And this is what's really doing. They're kind of losing money. Like they lost a billion dollars on this business. Now they can be profitable right now in this business if they want to, but they don't care about profitability in this business. They can use the cash flow from the business, the media business, the legacy TV business to invest in this direct consumer and then eventually turn it profitable. And this made their EPS looks much lower than Wall Street was expecting, like 50% lower. So what did Wall Street do? They lowered their targets and stuff. And what happened with the stock? It went down 20%. And it's not really justified whatsoever as they're doing the right thing. They're not putting back in their old dying TV business, which is not dying, but they're investing for the future where they're going to succeed. And I'm going to show you the margins and the valuation Viacom CBS can actually get in the future if they reach their long-term goals by 2024, which I think they can. Okay, so they raised their target for direct -to consumer kind of revenue by 2024 from 6 billion to 9 billion. That's a massive, massive increase, and that's a lot of confidence from the management team. If they continue like that, I would not be surprised if they even beat it. Now, here's the trick Viacom CBS right now. They have the net income margins between 7 to 8 percent. Why? Because their legacy TV business does not have high margin. Now, these direct -to consumers, they have 20 25 percent net income margins normally on net revenue. But I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to use 15 percent just because, you know, just to kind of underassume, not to overassume and then, you know, get hyped up on it. So let's get that 9 billion they have, which I think they can reach by 2024, three years from now. And I'm just going to time it by, you know, 15 percent net income margin. This is around one. $1.35 billion of net income in 2024. Now, if you slap a 20p just on that alone, this is more than the market cap right now, which is like how much? I don't 19 billion. But I'm not going to do that. Let's just take what we have here 1.35 billion. Now, Viacom CBS is making around $2.3 billion of net income from the legacy business. Now, I'm going to assume that this number doesn't change. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, but I'm not going to assume it's going to change. Or even I'm going to assume it's going to go down. Let's assume it be, instead of 2.3 billion, we just use 2 billion. Okay, so I'm just going to add on it here, 2 billion of the legacy business. This is around 3.35 billion dollars of net income for Viacom CBS for 2024. Now, right now, even I think Viacom deserves a higher PE than 5 or 6 or 7. Even 10 PE is pretty fair for something like Viacom. But even if you just take this number and you just slap in a 10 PE on it, this is around a 33 billion dollar market cap, which is more than 50 percent higher than the market cap right now. Now, let's just take a 15p because I think 15p is fair for Viacom after they pay more debt in the next three years, after they grow, after they get more respect from the market on how much more margins they can have, not just from the legacy business, but also from Paramount Plus and Pluto TV. Now, if I just take this total number here and I just slap in a 15p, this is around the $50 billion market cap. What is the market cap right now? Around $19.2 billion. So if I just take this number and I divide it by, you know, 19.2 billion, I get around 160% upside over the next five years. Now, even if I'm wrong 50%, let me cut this down by 50%. Instead of 160%, how much is that? Like 80%, 85%? for the next three years. This is not bad at all. For the next three years, not the next four years, not for the next five years, for the next three years alone. For me, in this overpriced market, I would not mind at all having my money in Viacom CBS as there's a lot of margin of safety in terms of those prices right now. If you didn't get in, don't worry. Don't just try to say, oh no, I didn't get in. What am I going to do right now? I think you're going to have plenty of time to get in until the more Viacom CBS is better understood by the market. Of course, there are rumors of acquisition from Netflix and all that kind of stuff. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but even if that never happened, you know, Viacom CBS or Paramount Global is fine either way. So this is my take on it. If you liked it, please press like and consider subscribing. I hope to see you in another one.